Is this the future? Stellina is a revolutionary astrophotography instrument that fits in a backpack and can take beautiful photos of deep sky objects using an app on your mobile device. It only takes a few minutes to set up and does not have to be polar aligned. In this review, we will tell you everything you need to know about this jaw-dropping product and see if it is worth the jaw-dropping price. We will also spend the night imaging in Death Valley National Park and see how it performs. Then, push its limits from the most light polluted city on Earth, Las Vegas. In 10, 20 or 30 years from now, will this replace the telescopes, cameras and mounts we know today? Let's turn Stellina on and see our first light appear right on our phone. Stellina was designed and built by French startup company Veonis. So, what's the key difference between Stellina and a regular telescope? Well, it does not have an eyepiece. Stellina is controlled with a smartphone or tablet through an app called Stellina App. The app takes care of initializing Stellina and slews to your desired target from its catalog of objects and automatically stacks and processes your images in real time. We will go more in depth about the app later in this review, but so far, we're impressed. We first met Stellina at CES 2018. You might remember our video about the astronomy innovations there, or our post about our first impressions of Stellina. Back then, we were really intrigued by the sleek design, the lack of buttons, and the promised ease of use of this astrophotography instrument. In our written post, we wished that perhaps one day we would be able to try out Stellina on our own, to see if it was not too good to be true. Well, that day has finally arrived. This review is going to be 100% honest, so we'll include what we like and what we don't like. And you can find our full text review online on our website at galactic-hunter.com. Stellina and its accessory parts are shipped in one big box. Our first thought was that it felt a little strange because everything that you need to do astrophotography is right in front of your eyes. We had flashbacks of when we first bought all of our own astrophotography equipment and received everything in multiple boxes over several days. Four years later, this felt unreal. In the main box we have... Stellina a cover and a welcome letter. In the smaller box, we have the tripod in his pouch, the tripod's manual and Allen keys, which you don't actually need, a bubble level, two batteries, and six lens cleaners. The tripod that comes with Stellina is a Gitzo Series 3 systematic tripod. It is made of carbon fiber and aluminum and feels extremely sturdy. It weighs 4.25 pounds and can support a payload of 55 pounds. The legs can be extended and can be set up in several different ways. As for the bubble level, it screws in at the bottom of Stellina and can be left there even when carried around. Stellina comes with two small power bank batteries that fit perfectly inside of the telescope's battery compartment. Realistically, you can use any battery of your choice, as long as it is an external battery with a USB Type-C connector. If imaging from your backyard, you could even plug it directly into the wall outlet by using an external power adapter. The two batteries that come with Stellina will last 5 hours each. When not in use, these batteries also have a cool little feature that can be helpful when packing up after a long night. They have their own flashlight built into them. So, how do you carry Stellina around? 
We use a backpack made specifically for carrying Stellina, which should be available on Veonis's website sometime soon. If you don't really want to spend extra money on a backpack, no problem. You can actually carry around Stellina in the box that it came in. Now, let's get technical. The lens is an apochromatic ED doublet with lanthanum glass, meaning there will be little to no chromatic aberration, and the colors of the stars will be natural. Stellina has an aperture of 80mm and a focal length of 400mm. It is pretty fast with a focal ratio of f5. A light pollution filter is included and located right in front of the camera sensor. Stellina can save the images in JPEG format directly to your mobile device, or in a 16-bit FITS RAW file if you have a USB flash drive. It does not require polar alignment, and any kind of alignment is done automatically with plate solving. Focusing is achieved automatically, and can be rectified if there is a drop in temperature during the night. Stellina also has its own dew heater, which activates automatically if it senses humidity on the optic system. It also has a rain sensor function which will make the computer system close the telescope to protect the lens when the weather becomes rainy. At the time of writing this review, Stellina cost $3,999. Stellina is really small and both the telescope and its accessories can fit in a large backpack and can be taken as a carry-on on an airplane. It weighs 24.7 pounds and has a size of 19 by 15 by 4.7 inches. It does start to feel heavy if carried around for an extended amount of time, for example if you're taking it on a hike. On the other hand, having the ability to set it up anywhere is gratifying enough and definitely worth it. Installing Stellina is, without exaggeration, about 100 times easier than setting up a regular astrophotography rig. All you have to do is put the tripod down, clip Stellina on it, tighten it, and insert the battery. Stellina doesn't have an eyepiece, so everything happens on your phone with an app called Stellina. It's easy to use, user-friendly, and full of information, and it has a great feature for group activities, but we'll talk about that later. The app is made up of four tabs. The first tab is to connect to Stellina and initialize it. The second tab is the catalog. This tab lists all objects currently available in Stellina's computer. You do not have to power Stellina on to browse the catalog, which is useful when you want to plan out your night beforehand. You may see colored dots on each object. These will tell you what target the app recommends at the present time or if you should wait to image it. The third tab is the Imaging tab. This is where the live stacking happens and where you will see your astrophotography come to life. The last tab is the Profile tab. Here you will see your bookmarks, if you have any, and a list of all your previous observations made with Stellina. You will also find the settings where you can activate night mode, read the frequently asked questions, or log out. So a little bit more about that group activity, uh, whether you're with family or educational purposes or astronomy outreach, you can have up to 20 people connect to Stellina and see a live view from your personal device as long as you've downloaded the app. So anyone can view the image in live um, as it's happening. So whoever is the leader of the group can give control to any member. Um, to control Stellina, which is really great, so they can you know, exclude the scope themselves and uh, pick a target and everyone will be able to see it at the same time, so it's really cool. And I think it's really great for um, you know, learning astronomy and learning how to pick targets in the sky, if you're with kids for example and stuff, so it's, it's really great. We are now going to use Stellina from two very different portal zones. How will Stellina perform under these two different skies? Let's find out! Okay, so we're on the way now to Death Valley, so we can really try Stellina in a dark location. So we'll see how it goes. We're now driving into the desert. Woo! So there's nothing really incredible and amazing except for, I guess, the landscape. And I'm from here, so I can appreciate, you know, 
the landscape. It's a lot of just nothing, nothingness out here. It's pretty cool. So a super fun fact, we are now driving by the prison north of Las Vegas. Uh, we just passed a sign that said hitchhiking was prohibited. So 10 out of 10 would not recommend picking up hitchhikers in this area. Most likely they will be from this prison. Tonight is a new moon and we just arrived at one of the darkest locations in America, Death Valley. We checked in at our hotel and started to get familiar with the landscape. Although we could have set up around our hotel, we will attend a star party tonight with the Las Vegas Astronomical Society. It is held in a blue zone, but the lights will be off, so it will be very close to Bortle 1. After an extra 40 minutes drive, we crossed the state border and were officially in Death Valley. We quickly installed Stelina and waited for the sky to become dark. How does Stelina work? When turned on, it will open itself and look for stars. Using plate solving, it will know exactly where it is and will not need any further alignment. It will then focus its lens, which can sometimes take several minutes. This is a longer step. Then you're in control. We decided to first photograph the Dumbbell Nebula. M27. Every 10 seconds, you'll see the image getting better and better on your mobile device. And here is our final result with only 12 minutes of total exposure. We also imaged the Pac-Man Nebula, this time for 30 minutes. Although not jaw-dropping, it is still impressive, as this target is better captured with narrowband HA and O3 filters. You can spot the dark dust lane as well as the cluster within. Lastly, we image the Orion Nebula for a total of 10 minutes. Needless to say, it looks absolutely fantastic. You can see some of the outer gas, which is much fainter than the gas around the core. M43 is also clearly visible on the left side of M42. We spent most of the night showing Stelina to club members and star party attendees, so we didn't spend a lot of time on one specific target. But one thing is certain, we are impressed. Our only regret was not bringing a USB flash drive to save the raw files and process them better on our computer back home. A few days later, we decided to try out Stelina from a very light polluted area, the Las Vegas Strip. What better obstacle for Stelina to be tested in than the City of Lights? Can we push it to the limit? So I am here on the Strip with Stelina, so we're going to try and see if we can, if we can capture a, a nebula from here. But um, it's really bright here, I can see zero stars in the sky. Uh, I can think I see Vega over there. That's pretty much it, I don't see any stars, one or two stars, so I'm really afraid it won't work, so we'll, we'll try and see if it works, um, but it's, it's kind of scary, I don't know, so let's set it up and we'll see. Dahlia wasn't available that night, but I met with a Galactic Hunter subscriber, Avo, who was kind enough to help me record some of these shots. We set up Stelina on top of a parking lot on the Las Vegas trip and turned it on. 
not going to lie, I actually wasn't sure if it would even be able to find a star to calibrate to. I mean, we were deep in night pollution there. Nice. What should we do from this trip? M27, I guess, to compare with uh, Death Valley, I guess? Yeah, yeah. So let's do M27. It's going to slow it. Happy and excited to be able to start imaging, a security guard came to tell us we had to leave because we were doing some extremely illegal stuff. Just kidding, she was actually really nice, but we promised her we would be gone in 15 minutes if she didn't kick us out. Stelina is equipped with a city light suppression filter. We were very impressed when the first frame showed up on our phone. Here is what we got, first shot. I mean, it's very noisy, but it's there. Well, you got that right now? 10 seconds, dude. <laughs> what? It's very, very noisy, but it's, it's there. You can see the dumbbell. The image was very noisy, but got better and better every 10 seconds, and it was really amazing to watch. So this was the first shot. Pretty impressive already. And after 39 stacks, so 6 minutes and 30 seconds, we have this shot right here. Which you cannot really see in the camera, but it's really impressive. Here is the 12 minute image of M27 from Las Vegas. Sadly, we did not have time to try another target. As we promised the security guard we would be gone within 15 minutes. But we successfully proved that Stalina can be used even from extremely light polluted areas. Now it is time for it to take a well deserved rest. Okay, so what is our final verdict and what is uh, the positives and the negatives about Stalina? So for one thing of the positives, it's really easy to set up. You just have the tripod, Stalina, and it has no other parts. Then it's ease of use. There is no polar alignment needed. There is no star alignment, no collimation. Um, also, image stacking is done by itself. There's so many things that are automatic and um, yeah, it's just super easy to use. We also really like that it's very portable. You can put it in a backpack. Um, Antoine's used it in the overhead storage of a bin of an airplane, so it fits there, as well as vehicles. It's really easy to carry. Okay, one more thing, maybe the Stelina app, um, which is full of good information about many targets. I think right now, at this time, there's about 151 targets, but they often update the app with more targets, so it's really nice. And um, yeah, just browsing the app is just nice, it's user-friendly, and uh, yeah, I love the app personally. So now, what are the negative aspects about Stelina? So one thing's for sure, you're not going to get as good quality images as you would get with a regular astrophotography setup. Um, I mean, you can work with the files from that USB hard drive we talked about, but you're just not going to get the same quality as you do the old-fashioned way. That's for sure. And um, a second point would be, over time, if you spend a lot of minutes slash hours on a specific target, sometimes the stars are going to become bloated really quick. So the more time you spend on the target, the more the stars will be, you know, will gain in size, and that can kind of uh, pollute the image sometimes. So just so you know, you know, the stars can be bloated. So another negative thing would be that it's a little bit wobbly. We're just worried that maybe in uh, you know windy conditions it might just, you know, affect the images that you get. Okay, and last negative point about Stelina is a tiny one, but the, the sleeve that comes with it is very, very slippery. So when you grab it, make sure, like, you know, 
doesn't you grab fall. It from the bottom. So it's a really really small point, but just so you know, yeah, this this protective sleeve is really really slippery. And that wraps up this review. You can find more information on the text version on our website. The link is in the description. The post will be updated over time as we get more and more images with Stellina. As for the question we posed at the start of this video, is this the future? Well, we don't know. It is hard to say. We know that this is a big step towards simplifying the hobby and making astrophotography equipment smarter and smarter. In 10 to 20 years from now, will this replace our current gear? Only time will tell. <laughs>